Ladies and gentlemen, Side Strafe back with War Thunder Ground Forces. And today we're going to be doing something a little bit different. I've got a variety of live stream highlights for you featuring the new Absolute Simulator event mode that we've been able to enjoy for a little over a week now, I think. Maybe more. I don't know. Uh, this footage. I think we'll go a long way in showing you that the game can be a bit random at times. Now, this first matchup, we're in the M4A3 76mm Sherman tank. You can see that we take a round from the Tiger. At this point, trying to get out of his gun depression. However, in doing so, we run into a friend of his, Yag Panther, with a deadly 88mm gun. Not something we want to deal with, especially from the front. In hindsight, I probably should have kept going past him. But since we didn't, next best thing, take out those tracks. We do so on his right side, preventing him from turning to look at me. We get behind him. One shot there to the back, and he's finished. Although still spinning in place. Perhaps the driver is alive and wondering what the frack just happened <laughs> to their tank. Now, we still have to deal with that Tiger, who at this point was pinning down quite a few members of my team. Bombadil was in this match, and I was talking to him over TeamSpeak and uh, asking for the location of the Tiger. I was actually hoping that he would pop out and I could maintain bridge cover and shoot from here. However, that simply wasn't the case. The Tiger was just standing up against an entire team, and that includes uh, aircraft. So, unfortunately, that means I have to move forward and try to flank. The problem with this is that I'm exposing myself to other enemies. Maybe something on the left, front, or perhaps even behind me if they're trying to flank as well. Uh, I do know that the 76mm gun is pretty good and that I can easily pen the side of the Tiger. If I can get the shot. We see him. I'm thinking this guy's as good as dead. Taking the same shot that I usually do towards the ammo rack. It does make contact, but it actually doesn't kill. Unfortunately, something else has hit me, damaging my gun breech. I, at the time, didn't know it. I fired my next shot, killing myself there. So that impact on the Tiger, I think, was questionable. Uh, probably should have killed him. Uh, next matchup, we flip sides. We're actually in the Tiger now shooting at Sherman's in hull down positions. You can see that the rounds are hitting the turret and uh, fragmenting within that compartment, showering the crew. That one looks like it hit the mantlet a little bit. Uh, we are taking shots from, I think, another Sherman on the left side, which we'll see in a little bit. That one that we were shooting at decided to back off. They appear to be 105 millimeter Sherman tanks, so not a huge threat from the front at this range. Uh, no need to really jump into heavy cover. One more shot out, spraying the crew again, and finally eliminating that Sherman tank. And you can see here the other Sherman to the left. Uh, again, I believe a short barrel variant. Uh, hard to tell from this distance. One shot goes out, but it's high. Bombadil there on the left. Now we're dealing with a uh, U.S. half-track anti-aircraft, 50 cals. Not sure why he thought it would be a good idea to shoot at a Tiger from the front with 50 cals. I start to pepper him a little bit there with the coax and finish him off with the 88. So he is now... Just a wreck because of his bad idea to attack a tiger. Uh, that Sherman pops back up. He's still trying to throw rounds at me. Shaking up the crew. But uh, really not enough. That one is uh, going to be stubborn though. You can see him just holding his position. That actually hitting his barrel. Which is probably going to make him back off. You can see him pushing back there a little bit more. Uh, we did have some air support, I think, in this match, but uh, I don't know that it was all that effective. Bombadil's still just keeping an eye on that target. Uh, at that point, we had to flip around, though, because we had something shooting at us from 
uh, behind. It's actually on the bridge. Another Sherman. We range in here close to 800 meters, uh, putting a fantastic shot into uh, the turret of that Sherman. Normally, that would probably uh, be enough to kill most of that crew and make everybody else that might possibly be alive <laughs> want to bail. But, of course, this is War Thunder, and it does not, and so he just backs off. So, you can see how random a lot of the damage seems to be. Sometimes you can one-shot a tank, and other times the same exact shot won't do a thing. It's like you systematically have to just destroy each crew member. But here you can see eventually driving up, finding that tank once again. He is not paying attention, and we get one into the side of his turret for the elimination. Uh, you'll see me switch shot locations quite a bit in War Thunder these days because you really just got to get rid of the crew. The crew survivability is through the roof, but you can keep damaging the same crew, which won't give you the elimination. So you have to almost find the locations of all the crew and just get rid of all of them to eliminate the tanks quickly. It shouldn't have to be that way, but that's what we're dealing with right now. Uh, I'm really hoping that they drop crew vitality because it's, it's a bit of a joke. But here's Sherman from the back. In this case, it is a one-shot kill. Uh, and that one, it looked like it hit the ammunition ready rack that's uh, around the turret basket. Uh, which is why I, I try to memorize the uh, ammunition locations of the tanks with the x-ray uh, view mode in the hangar. The problem is a lot of the ammunition locations are incorrect in this game. There's another half track round just through the uh, driver compartment, eliminating him. Now, this next fight illustrates the problems this game seems to have at close quarters. Uh, the ballistics behave a lot differently than they do at range. It seems like shots that should pen up close never manage to do so. Now, right off the bat, our gun barrel has been destroyed. However, of course, this is War Thunder and you have magical repair kits. I guess Hans has a spare barrel in the back and he's able to reattach it in the middle of combat in a simulator scenario. Uh, the problem is, we're also dealing with a M4A3E2. This is the Jumbo Sherman, up-armored from the front. The sides uh, has a thicker turret gun mantlet as well. He moves up pretty close range here. He's trying to put shots into the side where my ammo rack is, and he's simply not having any luck with that. So that might be one issue there. Uh, the next issue actually has to do with once I repair my gun barrel, which should be pretty soon. Uh, we've also got an AA vehicle shooting at the Sherman from the front at a steep angle for some reason. Not sure why he's thinking that's a good idea. I honestly believe people just don't know what they're doing most of the time. Uh, and so here you can see gun barrel repaired. I'm... Still immobilized, though, so I can't move the tank. I'm going to take the only shot that I have into the side there. It does manage to pen, even though it's at an angle, uh, not killing the tank. Now we're reloading. Going to go for another shot. Not as great, but still, again, managing to pen, not killing the tank. And so I am repaired fully, so I can reverse. But, unfortunately, I'm also getting hit by a 105 Sherman from the rear. He's setting me on fire and taking out my engine. I am, once again, having mobility issues. And, as you can see, we are clipping with the gun barrel on this Sherman, but shots are going into him at point-blank range. Not the best spots to be shooting at, but, uh, again, I don't have much of a choice considering the fact that I'm immobilized and this guy continues to just ram me, thinking that that is the number one solution. I actually don't know what he was doing. I don't know if he was trying to flip me or if he thought that this was just keeping me pinned or something. I, I really don't know. I, I, I notice a lot of people like to do this. Uh, it does seem to interfere with the physics, but... Uh, really it wasn't that that was messing me up. It was the fact that my engine was out. Uh, but again, you can just see these shots 
that are technically clip shots, but really we should both be dead and maybe more so myself since my gun was knocked out at the start. Finally eliminated by the 105 Sherman and I'm sure they're all happy to have me gone from the game. Uh, probably killed by somebody that we had killed before, but welcome to respawn mechanics and uh, allowing them to know your location. So with that, not so bad though. Uh, lots of medals and badges to soften the blow of defeat. Uh, you can see they're taking five tanks with me. We still lost, unfortunately, but uh, you know I can't complain when I at least get those results. Eh, who am I fooling? Of course I can complain. There was a lot of weird damage in that matchup. And uh, I'm glad that I've got it on video so that you guys can perhaps lay down some feedback in the comments below. Tell me what you think about uh, what you just saw. Now, this next matchup featuring the Yog Panther is probably a good example of how the spawn points are a little too close to each other, or at least too visible and out in the open. And you're thinking, well, that's really far away. That's not far enough, especially for something packing a dreaded 88mm gun. By the way, that's a lot of half-tracks. Well, it was a lot of half-tracks. There's one down at about 1,200 meters. One shot, one kill. Can we do it again, though? There's no way. That had to be luck. Let's see, though. That guy's upset at some planes. And now upset at me. But he can respawn, right? One of them might just have done so. How about another shot? Can we make it a hat trick? Sadly, no. Because... Bloop! My round decides to go on vacation. Nope, not going to happen. It somehow bounced off the front of the half track. And uh, that would have been a fantastic hat trick there. But he rides off into the sunset. Unfortunately, I can't lead that shot and lose a bit of visibility due to the tree being in the way. But we've got yet another half track out there in the distance. And lots of planes just going in for strafing runs and dive bombs. And you can see how that spawn location is just absolutely terrible. Uh, it, it doesn't work for the game. And it's no fun to get uh, spawn killed like that. Or at least in the beginning of the match, within the first minute or so of spawning. Uh, you also have to take into account connectivity issues and people playing with their ammunition and things like that. So the spawn points definitely need some work, and that is just a beautiful example of why. Uh, beyond that, we move into some cover, looking for some more targets. Sherman on the move, but it's another half-track. I wonder if it's one that I've already killed. Anyway, round out. He's down right through the driver compartment. I think that makes three so far. Poor half-tracks. Now this one I think is actually a wreck. I don't think that he's around. This first shot looks to go high. Let's try again. I'm thinking nobody's home, but I'd rather be safe than sorry. Round loaded, shot out, and that looks like it connects. Hard to tell, but I'm going to give up on him since we now have a new target. It's a Sherman tank. What kind of Sherman tank? I am not sure. So we throw one at him. And that's a bit short, so I raise elevation. And let's see if we can get him this time around. There we go, setting him on fire one time and realizing that is an M4A3E2. That's a jumbo Sherman that we just penetrated from the front at about 1,200 meters or more. Now, the thing that I ask here is how can we pen him from this far away, but we can't pen him from point-blank ranges? There we go again, at a very odd angle as well. Set a fire once more. On top of that, he's got Einstein over there with a 50 cal half-track trying to engage me at over 1,200 meters. Not sure why he thought that was a good idea. Tiger taking out the Jumbo Sherman from range as well at this point. Half-track annoying me enough for me to want to put some rounds on him. Shot goes short. He still thinks that even though he just saw an 88mm heading his way that he should just stick it out. 
Because what's the worst that could happen? Maybe that. But that's the next one. Analyzing the strange angles that we were able to pen that jumbo at range. In-game stats show about 188 millimeters at 1,000 meters range with that gun and the ammo that we had loaded up. Uh, so while it might technically be possible, the range was so great and the angle was so steep, I just find it to be highly unlikely. So definitely let me know what you think about that one. But in this next example, the allies get a little bit of payback, if you will. Now, this is a fresh match, not a join in progress. I do not have join in progress turned on. But what's the worst that could happen? I mean, we just got into the game, right? We should be able to participate for a little bit at least, I would think, right? I mean, that's generally a good way to keep a customer. Uh, Gaijin might have us thinking otherwise. Mustang saying hello. Aerial spawn once again, taking me out within a minute or so of spawning. That's just bad gameplay. Once again, as I've said before, uh, pilots need to start off at the airfield on the ground they should have to take off and that way it buys uh, the tank some time anyway how about another example featuring the tiger shot out misses escaping by the skin of my teeth here unfortunately we look back to see that uh, my friends are not as fortunate Yag Panther down tiger down two vehicles that can't respawn but that doesn't matter. Respawns are not the answer. The problem is the aerial spawning. As I said, planes should probably start at an airfield, grounded and be forced to take off. Next and final matchup of the day. I really don't think there are too many discrepancies in this one. Uh, it's just some fun gameplay with the T-3485 because why not? We haven't driven anything Russian in this video yet. So anyway, Jagdpanzer 4, I believe, out in front. Just trying to range him in. Very low profile, so not the easiest of tank destroyers to hit. Maybe we can get him on the third shot. There she goes. All right. Satisfying indeed. Uh, always difficult starting out in these matches because there's not a lot of cover and as we've seen in today's footage uh, Germans apparently have enough firepower to deal with these threats at ranges of 1200 meters or more Now making our way into the city we find a tiger presenting itself in the most unsuspecting of ways Sadly, I just don't have gun depression, so I can't fire a shot so I'm having to move forward. We see an opportunity, but I don't want to tunnel vision and get my ass handed to me. So I'm looking right, making sure that there are no other enemies coming from uh, their spawn. See, kind of just checking the bridge a little bit over there. And once we get to this corner, we want to make sure that that tiger hasn't turned around. However, we are indeed fortunate today as he decides to place himself upon a bridge, making himself an easy target. One shot, one kill. Catastrophic ammunition detonation is a go. And uh, I really love when that happens. It's, it's so satisfying. Now, for those of you that wonder why I'm always so cautious and why I take my time and why I try to err on the side of caution, for those of you that are constantly commenting, go, 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 hurry, 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 rush, be more aggressive, there will never be a better example than what you're about to see. And here's me stopping to look both ways. Oh, is that a gun barrel? It's just a Yag Tiger. A dead Yag Tiger. And that is why, ladies and gentlemen, I am so patient. That tank driver could easily snapshot me had I just rushed in without even giving it a second thought. That's why I play the way that I do. I like surviving. I like being able to capture objectives and winning games for teams. It's fun to me. But anyways, 
Ladies and gentlemen, I really hope you enjoyed today's look at War Thunder Ground Forces. It can be frustrating at times and apparently super buggy, but moments like this make it worth it. So with that said, thank you so much for joining me. I'll definitely see you on the next one.